In today's lesson, we're going to talk about translations. Take a minute to read the learning goal on the scale. Find where you are before we start the lesson. A transformation of a geometric figure is a change in the position, shape, or size of the figure. When you play dominoes, you often move the dominoes by flipping them, sliding them, or turning them. Each move is a type of transformation. The diagram below illustrates some basic transformations you will study. Here, the domino is flipped or reflected. In this picture, the domino is slid or translated. In this picture, the domino turns or is rotated. In a transformation, the original figure is the pre-image. The resulting figure is the image. An isometry is a transformation in which the pre-image and image are congruent. Here, if you notice, the image is the same size and shape as the pre-image. Therefore, the image is an isometry of the pre-image. In example one, we will identify an isometry. Does the transformation at the right appear to be an isometry? Explain. Since the image is larger than the pre-image, the image is not an isometry because the image is not congruent to the pre-image. Pause the video and do you try number one. In part A, since the image is congruent to the pre-image, it is an isometry of the pre-image. In part B, the image is also congruent to the pre-image, so it is an isometry as well. A transformation maps a figure onto its image and may be described with arrow notation. Prime notation is sometimes used to identify image points. In the diagram below, K prime is the image of point K. So here is K prime. It is the image of point K. Notice that you list corresponding points of the pre-image and image in the same order as you do for corresponding points of congruent or similar figures. So in this diagram, triangle JKQ maps onto triangle J prime, K prime, Q prime. In example two, we will name images and corresponding parts. For part A, what are the images of angle F and angle H? Since E prime, F prime, G prime, H prime is an image of figure E, F, G, H, I know that angle F prime will be the image of angle F. and angle H prime will be the image of angle H. In part B, we will name the pairs of corresponding side. Side EH will map onto side E prime H prime. Side HG corresponds to side H prime G prime. Side GF corresponds to side G prime F prime. And finally, side FE corresponds to side F prime E prime. Pause the video and do you try number two. In the diagram, triangle NID maps onto triangle SUP. Part A asks, what are the images of angle I and point D? Since angle I and angle U are in corresponding positions, angle I maps onto angle U. Since point D and point P are in corresponding positions, point D maps onto point P. Part B asks, what are the pairs of corresponding sides? When I answer a question like this, I prefer to use the name of the triangles to help me since they are already listed in corresponding order. So let's look at side NI and side SU. Next, let's look at side ID and side UP. Finally, let's look at side DN and side PS. These are the pairs of corresponding sides. A translation is a transformation that maps all points of a figure the same distance in the same direction. A translation is an isometry. 
If you notice, point A maps onto point A prime, point B maps onto point B prime, and point C maps onto point C prime. The size, shape, and orientation of a geometric figure stay the same when you slide the figure in one direction. The diagram at the right shows a translation in the coordinate plane. Each point of the black square moves four units right and two units down. Using variables, you can say that each ordered pair xy in the original figure is mapped to x prime y prime, where x prime equals x plus 4 and y prime equals y minus 2. You can use arrow notation to write the following translation rule. xy maps onto x plus 4, y minus 2. That means I move x in a positive direction 4 units and I move y in a negative direction 2 units. In example 3 we will find the image of a translation. What are the images of the vertices of triangle PQR for the translation xy map onto x minus 2, y minus 5. Graph the image of triangle PQR. For our translation of left 2 down 5, we will move each of the points to the left 2 and down 5 units. Here you can see we moved point R 2 units to the left and 5 units down. We moved point P, 2 units to the left, and 5 units down. And finally, we moved point Q, 2 units to the left, and 5 units down. Then we get the image of P prime, Q prime, R prime. Pause the video and do you try number 3. For part A, what are the images of the vertices of triangle ABC for the translation xy mapped onto x plus 1, y minus 4. Graph triangle ABC and its image. The translation rule tells us we will move to the right one unit and down four units. So let's move each point. Let's start by moving point A to the right one and down four units. Now let's move point B to the right one and down four units. And finally, we'll move point C to the right one and down four units. Let's complete our diagram by connecting A prime, B prime, and C prime. Part B asks us to draw segment A, A prime, segment B, B prime, and segment C, C prime. What relationships exist among these three segments? How do you know? The three segments are congruent because a translation maps all points of a figure the same distance in the same direction. In example 4, we will write a rule describing a translation. What is a rule that describes the translation of PQRS mapped onto P prime, Q prime, R prime, S prime? Since point P moves 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 units to the right and 1, 2 units down, our translation rule will be xy is mapped onto x plus 8, y minus 2, 8 units to the right, 2 units down. Pause the video and do you try number 4. The translation image of triangle LMN is triangle L prime, M prime, N prime, with L prime at 1, negative 2, M prime at 3, negative 4, and N prime at 6, negative 2. What is the rule that describes the translation? Since point L is currently at negative 6, negative 1, and we are mapping onto L prime at 1, negative 2, negative 6 plus 7 equals negative 1. So there is a move of 7 units to the right. Since negative 1 minus 1 equals negative 2, there is a move of 1 unit down. So the translation rule would be xy maps onto x plus 7, y minus 1. Another way to answer this question would be to graph both triangles and count the translation. Once the two triangles are graphed, we can now count from one point to its image. So let's take n. We move 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 units to the right, 
and one unit down. So our translation rule would be xy maps onto x plus 7, y minus 1. A composition of transformations is a combination of two or more transformations. In a composition, you perform each transformation on the image of the preceding transformation. In the diagram at the right, the field hockey ball can move from player 3 to player 5 by a direct pass. This translation is represented by the blue arrow. The ball can also be passed from player 3 to player 9, then from player 9 to player 5. The two red arrows represent this composition of translations. In general, the composition of any two translations is another translation. In example 5, we will compose translations. The diagram shows two moves of a black bishop in a chess game. Where is the bishop in relation to its original position? Since we start by moving from here to here, we make a move of 1, 2, 3, 4 units to the right, 1, 2, 3, 4 units down. In our second move, we move from this position to this position, which is a move of 1, 2 units to the right, 1, 2 units up. We can add our compositions. 4 plus 2 gives us 6, and negative 4 plus 2 gives us negative 2. So we have moved from xy maps onto x plus 6, y minus 2. Now we can check this by counting our original position to our final position. We've moved 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 to the right and 1, 2 down. x plus 6, y minus 2. Pause the video and do you try number 5. The bishop next moves 3 squares left and three squares down. Where is the bishop in relation to its original position? From this location, we move three squares left and three squares down to this location. Now, we can do one of two things. We can take our final destination from before and add to it our new moves, three squares left, three squares down and we will get a translation of x plus 3, y minus 5. Or we can start at our original position and count the number of spaces to our new position. So from here we would have 1, 2, 3 to the right, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 down. So x plus 3, y minus 5. Now is your chance to see how well you learned the lesson. Pause the video and do the lesson check. Don't forget to check your answers on the next slide. If you've missed any and you're not sure why, be sure to ask me tomorrow in class. If you feel like you truly understand, take a shot at the challenge. I'm sure you can do it. Take another look at the learning goal and scale. Have you climbed up the scale since we started the lesson?